One of the more common system files that you want to understand, whether you are doing forensics, incidents response, or system administration, are the cron tab files. These files will tell you what processes are running in a periodic manner on your system. These files can also give you clues as to whether your system was compromised and if any persistent malware has been installed on your system. In this video, we will look at the crontab files and the tasks which are going to be run on your system on a periodic basis. So in most Linux systems, there is a process that is always running called cron. And cron is basically a time-based scheduler. And you can take a look at it by doing a PX, AUX, and then grepping for cron. This scheduler can execute jobs for you on a periodic basis, such as nightly, on the first Monday of each month, or even every 42 minutes. Typical usage for what cron is used for is for backing up your system. Your system administrator may kick off a backup process at 3 a.m. when the least amount of people are going to be using the system. Hackers may also compromise your system and send out data on a periodic basis, so we should really understand what's going on with our system. Let's take a look at some of the files that are involved with the cron process. I'm going to do a listing of everything in the slash etsy folder that starts with cron. So ls-ld slash etsy slash cron star. So we see a folder named cron.d and then a bunch of other folders named cron.daily, hourly, monthly, weekly. And then we also see a file named crontab. And this file is the main file that contains jobs to be scheduled. So let's take a look at this crontab file. I'm going to do a more of slash etsy slash crontab. And we see a lot of lines starting with the pound or hashtag symbol, which means those lines are comments and not executed. At the top of the file, we see some environment variables such as shell, path, home, etc. And those are passed to the jobs that are run. Towards the bottom of this file, we see a few cron jobs listed. These lines determine the dates and times that the particular scripts within those folders are run. So for example, let's take a look at this first line for hourly. You see here this first column says 17. So this represents that every 17th minute of the hour. And then the second column here is a star. So that's the wildcard for the hour. So which means every hour this script is going to execute on the 17th minute. And then the third column is for the day of the month. And then the fourth column is for the month. So that means every month this is going to execute. And lastly, the fifth column is for the day of the week. So this means that on every day of the week, this is going to run. This column here that specifies which user this command is going to run as. So in this case, it's going to be root that's going to run the command. And then the command is basically going to be cd slash and then ampersand ampersand run parts dash dash report slash etsy slash cron dot hourly. So essentially, this is going to run each of the files in this hourly folder. And notice that the cron tab file, there is a column to specify what the user to run as. This field is not present in the cron tab for individual users. The other lines in this cron tab file, you can see that at different times of the hour and of the day and so forth, it's going to run the weekly and monthly cron jobs in those respective folders. All right, so let's get out of the cron tab file and go back and look at the folders in the Etsy folder. And all of the ones that end in some time period essentially contain scripts that get executed at that frequency. So let's take a look at the Etsy cron.daily folder. And we can see that there are a few files in here. And so they are all going to be run on a daily basis. So let's take a closer look at one of them. I'm going to do a more of Etsy cron.daily slash log rotate. So here we see that this script is going to use the program log rotate to run every day to make sure that the system logs are properly rotated and saved. The folder cron.d contains files which have the same format as the crontab file and are run by the cron program. So let's take a look at 
the cron D folder by doing an ls-l. And so we see a few here on this system, but let's just take a look at one of them in more detail. I'm going to do a more of Etsy slash cron.d slash John. So in the commented line here, we see that uh, basically at 1 a.m. every night, the process starts for the program John, which is a password cracker. And then it stops at 7 a.m. every morning. So it looks like the intent here is that between 1 and 7 a.m., there is probably minimal activity on this machine. So the admin wants to use the CPU cycles and GPU cycles to crack passwords with the program John. And so what we looked at so far are the jobs that the system runs. But there are also files under slash var slash spool slash cron slash cron tabs, which are user specific as each user can also have cron jobs run. So I'm going to do a ls-l of var spool cron cron tabs. And we get the permissions denied error, which means it requires root privileges to access. So that makes sense as you don't want other users to see your cron jobs and then they don't want you to see theirs. But the admin account of root is always trusted, so apparently they can see everything. So let's go ahead and do this again with the sudo command. All right, we see that I have nothing here for now. And we'll come back to this in a little bit, so don't worry. Now that we have seen the crontab files, which tell the system at what time intervals to perform a task, Let's take a look at how to see what the system is scheduled to do and then how to edit the crontab files. The command we will be using is crontab. So I'm going to do crontab-l. The dash l option is for listing the cron jobs, which looks like we have none. So let's make some by using the dash e option for edit. So I'm going to do crontab-e. We're told that there is no cron tab for Blue Monkey Forensics. And then it allows us to select an editor. And I'm a VI guy, so I will choose them by typing the number 2. But obviously, if you're more comfortable with Nano, go ahead and pick that one. All right, as you can see, this process walks you through how to create a cron tab entry. It's pretty, pretty clear instructions. So let's pretend that we're going to create a backup job so that every Monday at 2.15 a.m., the system will copy over all of my files to my NAS as the backup. So the way I start is to, is to put 15 in the minutes column and then 2 in the hour column, right? So that's 2.15 a.m. And then in the week and month columns, I will put star. So basically that means every week and every month. And then on the day of the week, I'm going to put a number 1, which represents Monday. Then I'm going to put my command, right? So I'm going to do rsync-av of my whole folder, which is in slash home slash blue monkey forensics. And my destination is a mounted NAS at slash mnt slash NAS slash backups. All right, so that's pretty much all you need to do. But for this demo, since we won't be able to wait until 2.15 a.m. on Monday, I'm going to do another line here, which we can actually see right now. So I'm going to have the system touch a file every minute, and then the file name is going to be cron dash, and then date and timestamp. All right, so because I want to do this every minute, my time periods are going to be just star, 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 right? So this literally means every minute of every day of every month, of every week, every day of the week, I'm going to perform this command, which is touch tilde slash demo slash cron dash dollar open parentheses date plus backslash percent capital F dash backslash percent capital H backslash percent capital M and parentheses. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and save these lines and exit them. So we've basically created a couple of cron jobs. So let's do the listing again to make sure they are there. So I'm going to do cron tab dash L. And sure enough, at the bottom of the file is indeed my two lines that I added. 
And we can also verify by looking at the slash var folder. Remember, we can do a sudo ls-l of slash var spool cron cron tabs. And now we see a new file named Blue Monkey Forensics, right? So that's my user, so it's named after the user. So my user now has a cron tab file. So let's take a look at the contents by doing sudo more slash var slash spool slash cron slash cron tabs slash Blue Monkey Forensics. And we see that this is indeed the same file that we had edited as before. So lastly, let's take a look at my demo folder to make sure that the cron actually work. All right, so I'm going to do ls-l of tilde slash demo. And here we see that there are files created every minute with the naming scheme of the date and then the time. So this definitely worked, right? Every minute I get a new file. Now that we're done with the cron tab demo, I'm going to use a dash r option to remove the cron tab. So I'm going to do cron tab dash r. And so what this is going to do is remove the current cron tab. So if we take a look at it with the cron tab dash l command, we'll see that we don't have a cron tab anymore. So this is one way of editing and deleting the cron tab file is with the cron tab command. You can also just vi the file and then just delete it when you're done. The difference is that with the crontab-e command, it will actually execute the crontab when you save it. So then you know if it actually works or not. Versus if you just do vi, you'll have to manually test out the command to make sure it does work. One other crontab file we haven't looked at yet is the slash etsy slash ana crontab. So let's take a look at this file. I'm going to do a more of Etsy ANA cron tab. The regular cron jobs that are set for weekly or monthly expect the machine to be up continuously such that every week at the designated time that job would run. But if the system goes down due to issues, those cron jobs set to run during the hours of the outage will not be executed, right? Because the machine's not on. But with ANA cron, Jobs that are set for a week will run when the device is powered back on. This is a perfect mechanism for hackers to ensure that any malware or backdoors uh, that they have on your system is launched every time the machine is rebooted. One place we might want to look at is uh, var spool anacron, which is a directory used by the anacron process to, to store timestamp files of when anacron was run. In order to control which users on your system can access the cron process, there are two files that control which users are allowed or denied access. The file cron.allow in the Etsy folder grants cron job access to users who are listed in this file. The file consists of a list of usernames and it's only one username per line. The access granted or denied includes creating crontab files, editing crontab files, listing crontab files, and then deleting the crontab files. The file cron.deny lists users who are denied cron privileges. In terms of precedence, the allow file has precedence over the deny file. So there you go. Not too much to the cron process using crontab files. Most corporate Linux systems will have jobs that they want the system to perform periodically, such as backups or rotating logs. Unfortunately, malicious actors are also known to take advantage of this mechanism to embed persistence malware in your system. So it is important to understand how cron works and how to read the cron tab file. For even more info, you can do man of cron and cron tab. I know that you will enjoy another Linux video like this one here. Leave me a comment below and click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.